hello everyone welcome to this video uh, today we will be discussing system modeling languages and architecture we later in the video we will also discuss about system composer a tool from mathbox so system modeling languages or this ml it's a general purpose modeling language for systems engineering application right and it supports specification design and analysis design verification and validation of a broad range of systems and systems of system so one example of such a system would be say a clutch automation system so we want to automate clutch in a vehicle and we want to represent this system using a system modeling language why we want to do that so that it helps us in understanding our system our architecture it also helps us in designing our system an architecture or a system model also works as a common language that everyone in the team speaks so this ml was originally developed by open source specification project and it includes an open open source license for distribution and use uh, this ml is defined as an extension of a subset of unified modeling language that is nothing but uml and using uml profile mechanism so uh, this is about uh, this ml let's quickly look at the history of uh, this ml how it came into the existence so this initiate this initiative originated in january 2001 uh it was decided by international council of council on systems engineering in course model driven system design work group to customize the universal modeling language for system engineering application so first came uml and then this ml was derived from it for systems engineering application and then uh, some blah 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 about the uh, some more details about the origin uh, and then the important people who were involved and then how the different versions of this ml came up so all this is about this ml let's quickly look at the type of diagrams that are included in this ml so we have activity diagram to capture activity then we have block definition diagram this basically details the overall system in a block fashion then internal block diagram it includes lot of internal information about the system then package diagram parametric diagram requirement diagram sequence diagram and state machine diagram and then we also have a use case diagram which entails the overall use of the product or the system then we have some tools and yeah some references so that that's all from the wikipedia page now let us also take a look at the this ml open source project website so what they have to talk about what is this is ml and who created this ml and a, a bit more information out about the this ml language so this ml org is uh, developed and maintained by uh, entity called this ml partners it comprises of many different organizations who are constantly involved in developing maintaining and advancing the development for this ml so full form is systems modeling language like we have already seen it's a dialect of the unified modeling language nothing but uml and its application is for system system engineering so this ml is a general purpose system architecture modeling language right it is used for system architecture it's a modeling language and the applications are systems engineering applications 
So what does SysML support? This we have already seen specification, analysis, design, verification, and validation of of a broad range of systems and systems of systems. The systems also may also include hardware, software, information, processes, personal, and facilities. Right. So a general mechatronic product would have hardware, software, and probably processes involved. A plant. Or our infrastructure will have more facilities and processes, and so on and so forth. The application and the need may vary from domain to domain, application to application. So this is more about SysML and how it is related to UML. SysML is an enabling technology for model-based systems engineering, right? So let's. Look at the taxonomy for agile model-based systems engineering methods. So what we have here is a SysML diagram taxonomy for agile MBSC. All right. So let us try to decode this. Let us start from here. What we see here is a parametric diagram. It is. This is nothing but it contains parameters of our system, which do nothing but they define our system. We use those parameters to build our internal block, and from there we use it to build our block definition. Then we also use our package information to develop structure of the system. Then at the same level comes requirements of the system, and then also the behavior of the system. So let us. Look at how the behavior of the system is defined. So we start from uh, uh, some Turing and non-Turing complete useful for CANAPS only. Uh, okay, this, this this looks more from uh, uh, information and uh, application point of view. Let us look at the let, let uh, so let, let us start from here. So we define use cases. Uh, diagram. Then we define sequence diagram. We define activity diagram, and then state machine diagram. So uh, together they represent how the user will be interacting with the system, right? And that defines the behavior of the system. How how the system is supposed to behave? How the system is supposed to behave? So we have requirements, we have structure, and we have behavior. With these three building blocks, we can define a system modeling. language based model for the system how csml should be used for development purpose that's all about csml so this method is from mathworks website about system composer so why we use system composer it is to design and analyze system and software architectures so system architecture as well as software architecture can be designed and analyzed using system composer so how system composer helps is it enables the specification and analysis of architectures for model based systems engineering right so what we saw before was open source system modeling language what we are seeing right now is a commercial system modeling language the system composer is not open source it is not free to use we have to buy a mathworks license in order to use it so the process the model based system engineering design process is used uh so with the system composer you can allocate your requirements right while define while refining the architecture model and that can then be designed and simulated in simulink right so we have our requirements right from that we refine our right from that we define we refine our architecture right and from that we make our simulink model so now architecture model have some components 
and interfaces right that is how the relation between different components is defined that is how system is overall defined systems behavior systems characteristics they are defined using the components and their relationship and relationships are defined using interfaces so they can be authored directly using system composer they can be imported from other tools or they can be populated from the architectural elements of the simulating design so these are the capabilities that system composer offers you can describe your system using multiple architecture models we can also establish direct relationship between them via model to model allocation now please bear with me the language is a bit complicated but with time we will uh, try to understand uh, system composer in a uh, easy way as a first step i am going through the matlab documentation to understand how to use the system composer to and with time i will also figure out what is the best way to learn the tool so behavior right we saw before that behaviors are also captured in sysml so behavior can be captured using sequence diagram state chart and simulating model then we, we can define and simulate the execution order of our component function and generate code from the software architecture model itself using simulating and emulate code so this is a added uh, functionality that system composer offers it offers a option to generate code from it so it sort of provides an end to end tool where we have our architecture tool i'm sorry we have our architecture we have our simulating model and we have our code okay to investigate specific design or analysis concern we can create custom live views of the model architecture model can be used to analyze requirement capture properties via stereotyping perform trade studies and produce specification and interface control document idc all right so if we go to the matrox website we can also see their detailed documentation about architecture authoring so we use architecture authoring to create and elaborate specifications of architecture composition and interfaces for model based systems engineering and software so this should ideally be the first step that we undertake when we try to define our architecture define and model our architecture using system composer then requirements allocation and traceability so associate architecture model elements with requirements then iteratively decompose architectures while deriving additional requirements to create specification then profile and analysis add custom properties to architectural elements to extend your architecture with domain specific design data and apply matlab analytics to perform trade studies then we have live model views where we can produce model views for specific design or analysis concerns and easily visualize them using different diagram types architectural allocation establish directed relationships between elements of two architectural models representing different aspects of the system such as functional software or physical architecture then behavior modeling so describe component and system level behavior using various formalism such as block diagram state chart and sequence diagram then software architecture define the execution order of functions simulate the design at the architecture level and generate and deploy code to your embedded system then simulating integration implement your architectural component in simulating 
with consistent interfaces and traceability throughout the model based design architecture import and export import and architectural model that was created by a third party database or architecture modeling to edit it and export it back with changes so all these are the possibilities with system composer as we go along we will try to learn more about how to use system composer in a practical way uh, i know from the documentation it looks very complicated so thank you for joining uh, for today's video uh, please hanging there while we move forward with our uh, interest and determination to learn system composer in 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 detail